Flight Pilots and welcome back to another X-Wing Flight video brought to you by Out of Art Gaming. As always, my name is Phil. Today we have something a little bit different for you. We actually have an epic game for you to watch. I'm joined by Connor and Quinn who actually did play this game. So hi guys, how's it going? Hi, good to be back. Hey buddy. Um, it's great to have you here. Again, thanks for actually getting your epic stuff out so that we could see it on the channel really looking forward to seeing how this game goes so i think it's only fair that we run through the list and connor as you're on the left hand side did you want to let us know what you decided to let quinn destroy quickly spoilers so i uh i bought the squid uh on the in the scum faction with uh boba fett dengar tractor tank tentacles uh sarge ventures did i mention boba fett you did and uh drill beak so my plan there getting close start using that drill beak do some big damage i uh, also brought on tarani with uh marksman and prockets usual bullseye stuff with the uh Kingola. and then i bought uh four m3a's uh, serasu genesis red the teen and sunny bounder everyone's favorite the teen's obviously got duke to uh with her ability and Sarah Sue is the wing leader so they'll be flying as a wing did oh, you intentionally have two m12s because you got four m3s and an m12 was that just a happy coincidence oh i wish i planned that <laughs> good spot oh, there's always something good in there so just as a quick one the overlay doesn't actually have all of the squids cards on there although tts now supports epic for some reason it wouldn't let me put those cards on there so they are on there, but if you want to see the full list, they will be in the description below. Is this your way of saying foul play and that Connor is already cheating? Or uh, No, I, I did actually check the cards of the list. You can build the list legally, so we will let him off this time. Let's not bring that up. I've only just to be allowed to be back on this channel to play Epic. Yeah, after the incident with Vader. Yes, but... it was a very big incident with Vader. I remember that. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, what have you brought to the table, Quinn? Uh, well, I've brought the First Order collaborators in the Raider. Not really a First Order ship, but it's not like we get much sequel um, support in Epic. It's got Stalwart Captain on it. In the unlikely event that it dies, it hangs around for a bit longer. Uh, concussion missiles and advanced present torpedoes, because it's basically just a big gunboat. Uh, Commander Malarus, because it's the First Order, you've got to have some First Order people on board. Ordnance teams are like the real clutch because they mean you can change the range of any of your attacks and that's quite painful. Uh, bombardment specialists for those nice reloads and optimised power core because having two energy back a turn just isn't quite enough. Uh, we've got Tavson in the Upsilon who is double action damage dude. Uh, hyperspace tracking data because I wanted a free focus on the first turn because why not. Uh, pattern Analyzer, because you got to. Agent Terex and Kylo Ren. Captain Phasma, in the hopes I can drain the energy of the squid. Uh, shield Upgrade, because seven shields is like just about the right amount. And Muse is there too. Yeah, I mean, you've got a lot of shields between those two ships. I mean, you've got more shields between those two ships than Connor has on his whole side. So, in I fact... also have more attack dice on those two ships than Connor has on... Well, his entire wing, but... <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, it's... When you sent me the lists, I looked at that and went, wow, Connor's, Connor's really, really using those points. He's got a lot in there. And then you sent me yours, I was like, three ships. I mean, it's very... Oh, okay. Quinn, I always put my points <laughs> into uh, upgrades. It, that is very Quinn, yeah. Even yeah. when I played Armada for the first time the other week, going into a slightly different tangent... Uh, I put it all into upgrades there. I just like upgrades. It's just my thing, apparently. Fair enough. Well, I mean, the ships look great on the board. It's nice to... Well, we can see the squid. The um, Raider's a little bit hidden at the moment, so hopefully he might move down shortly. But it is nice to see the epic ships on the board and the wing tool being used there. Just about seeing through the tentacles of the squid there. Connor, um, did you regret Boba Fett? Because um, you want to be close, but I also want to be close. Uh, I I can say I, I regret the first the first the setup and probably the first two turns. 
I yep. mean, I did kind I, of play you with the asteroids. So yeah, you had one place I, you could go. I thought starting backwards would be advantageous as well as funny. Turns out, it was just funny. It was quite funny. The fact that that ship can move can move backwards is is pretty cool. Um, it was not the right tactical move in this scenario. It's a shame, really, isn't it? Because its its primary arc is forwards, but the whole ship is focused on being backwards which kind of begs the question why not have a primary arc in the same like place yeah yeah I mean, just, think... out of curiosity, just out of curiosity because i'm not very familiar with the squid or its dial it's reverse moves are they white or red red uh, i think the the reverse one is white oh the reverse okay. two is red the reverse two is got, red it's also got a 4k okay. which is ridiculous yeah so the reverse two if you do that, you'll have to spend an energy to do it, essentially, because with Epic, yes. instead of getting stress, you lose an energy. Is that correct? Yes, unless you have no energy, in which case you have to get a stress token. Fair enough. And yeah, also, can, you... in, in terms of attack, like as we were discussing with the primary arc, you get a primary weapon and then as many bonus attacks as you can fit. So having a primary arc that's completely opposite to how you're meant to fly the ship is not ideal when it's designed to, like, take out one ship at a time. That, that was a free attack that I, I, I... It's pointing the wrong way, I can't use it. That that attack doesn't cost me any energy, and I can't use it. But then if I was facing the wrong way, I couldn't use any of my hard points, couldn't use my tractor controls, couldn't use my beak. It's a, it's a weird ship. It's, it's weird in terms of X-Wing, because the way it's designed, like in canon, it's, it's a big ship that grapples bigger ships and drills into them and kills them. In X-Wing, it's designed to kill smaller ships uh, that's what i was going for i was i was hoping to get to get you know attached to the side of your ship there and uh for anyone start doing damage know, do you want to explain your two hard points that are facing backwards uh yes let me just get them up so the tractor tentacles uh allow me to uh it's a two dice out the back at range one to two the first attack's free, and I can spend energy to do it four more times. Uh, the ship has an inbuilt ability with the tractor tentacles, I believe. Yes. Where if it hits, the defender gets a tractor token. And that's great. Apart from that's one tractor token per hit. I could do it four times if I had three energy left over. I need six tractor tentacles to actually track to you. Yes, you don't have that much energy either. Is it no. five energy as a base? A three. Three. three for the base. Six. It's just not a lot of energy. You have to use it in the right circumstances. And the, the drill beak is a zero to one, three dice out the attack, um, out the back. Um, I can perform the attack at range zero. It uh, requires an energy. And if it's a range zero, all hits become crits. Which is nice. Which is nice. And if you're tracted at range one, you're treated at being range zero. So that's the that's Have the idea is tractoring. Yeah, it's tractoring you with the tentacles. I know you're not a range two, um, range zero because uh, huge ships can't bump. No, so true. I can use the range zero bonus of hits to crits with you being at range one. That that was the plan. <laughs> they kind of, they're kind of designed to have two. I think you've mentioned this during the game, but if you have two, you might actually get enough tractor tokens to go to do something interesting. Yeah. yeah. Then you've got tractor technicians that lets you them hang around at the end of the turn. But again, it has to be range one of you. Like, it's really not designed to go against a big ship. It doesn't really make any sense. And the things you have had on your radar as well, with your advanced protons, your, your primary weapon being four dice anyway. Yep, and if you're in my bullseye, the inbuilt ability of the radar is if you're in my bullseye, or torp attacks, missile attacks, or primary attacks, I get an extra dice. So, and, and your missiles. You, a range one doesn't benefit me at all going up against yours. No, and also I had the really annoying ordnance technicians where I could go, oh, look, I have a calculator. If I spend that, I can add one to my advanced proton torpedoes range, and I can do that at range two now, like we yeah. are at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you kind of, yeah, you do not want to be that close to a raider. Unless you're in five crocs, in which case it doesn't matter. But I, I think I would like to try this again. I, th I think a pair of squids yeah. might be able to pull off what they're designed for against a huge ship. 
don't get me wrong, they're really good at small ships. If you get a small ship in my rear arc, I tractor you, I move you, you one less defense dice, and then your tractor, so all my hits become crits. And you it's... also get the, the joys of the tractor team, where you can change the speed of a standard ship if it's... Um, yeah, uh, and, and you keep your tractor tentacles, so you're, you're tractored again second round. So if I, if I manage to catch a small ship, I will destroy it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, uh, could, it's a shame done... I've pointed it towards <laughs> towards your radar. I think the Upsilon would have been in trouble had you been close, but we decided to do a nice duel of the big ships, which we both know how that would end. I I am often flying the Raider against you, Quinn. Yes, and you I are. think we know that you have to really focus fire it, regaining two shields each turn. If you if you stop firing against it for one yeah. or two turns, it just regains shields and then. And then you, you, and it has so many, and it has so much energy. Yeah, exactly, just, exactly. You, once you start, you have to, you have to see it through. Yes, you have to I'm, put everything into it to get it off the board. That was my game plan here. But unfortunately, where I have three incredibly strong attacks, like you've got no defense. You've got one defense dice. Uh, I don't think I have any. Which is weird, because like. The croc yeah. gets one defense dice, and the croc is less maneuverable than, you know. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's that's a good point. You'd think the squid being actually quite a small ship with just big tentacles. I mean, there's not actually a lot of ship there. Most yeah, of the tentacles, yeah. Like, you, would be you hard think to I'd see. get an evade dice for that? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so yeah I mean, you one. In, in the length of it, it's very long. But when it comes to the actual mass of the ship, there isn't actually that much there. Especially um, when you think about how they're used, the tentacles spread out, and then you've just got the yeah. beak, and then it, and then it goes like attacks things. But yeah, it, I almost feel that the squid is definitely, as Connor said, two of them against a raider or a tantive might work, but the squid feels more like it should be going after like the small through large bases instead. Yeah. and if it gets in the middle of a swarm and can break up a wing then it can just pick the ships off at will. Yeah. Um, going up, a, a raider... The, the, raid, the raider here can also focus fire. Your raider is going after my squid right now, and it's oh, I've also a targeting it. battery. I forgot about that. So yeah. I can spend my target lock on my advanced proton torpedoes, oh. then targeting battery for you to get a lock again, and then spend that for my missile. That's another attack you're getting in there as well. And it's also for an extra attack, yeah. It can the, the, the raid is managing to get four attacks on my big ship each turn. It's just mm. not... I'm, attack, on, I'm on six hull already, look at it. Two, three attacks. Yeah, and I mean, we're, lock, we're on turn two. And loads of calculates. And focuses. Picking up on your loads. your point about having a defense dice, the, uh, the the trident has access to the evade ability. The, the evade action, sorry. Does doesn't it? So it's designed. Uh, it's to be... red. It's red. So, but it's designed. That sort of hints that it it should be somewhat evasive. It for, yeah. for it only work if you are far away, but you need to be close to use. Whoever designed the, as nicely as possible to the X-wing team, whoever designed the squid, just missed a few things because they've not done a good job. I mean, it is a cool. Sh I mean, it looks cool. Uh, of all the epic ships, it's arguably the the most interesting and coolest looking. I mean, the oh, Tantiv, yeah. the Tantiv, and the yeah, the Tantiv and the GR seventy five are iconic as we see them in the movies. The Raider looks like a small star destroyer, and then in Battlefront two, you see it heavily in there and the Gazanti you see multiple variants and it was actually in the Mandalorian I'm, I'm not gonna lie I was so happy when I saw it in the Mandalorian so I was like good. I have that ship but um yeah I mean the the Raider in a 300 point game the Raider is ridiculous it's very expensive but it's just so good at what it does it's like in Epic it, it's almost like you're taking Fen Rao against a load of basic TIE fighters you you're just you're For the doubling audience, down on ridiculous. I'm still doing attacks with the Raider against the Trident. That's how many attacks the Raider gets. Like, it's still going. Yeah. It, it's just brutal. Like, in Epic, you can you can really just go crazy. I mean, I've used the Raider, and I'm not going to lie, to just 300-point list with a Raider and a Gazanti, and it was a bit brutal. It worked very, very, very well. Sorry, Wes. 
you've, um, you've, you've got the hull and the shields there as well to take whatever's coming your way. And the bonus attack, it like against a huge ship, you're likely to be in the bullseye, not in this case because we're effectively parallel, and that's extra dice. It's just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. I mean, you've, you've managed to take five shields off the radar at this point, Connor, but you've lost a lot. You've Can lost. We just ha- appreciate all of those crits that Connor is having to lay out after my like insane. I think I think it was at this point during the game that I realised oh, I shouldn't have done mistake. this. I shouldn't have yeah. done this this way at all. Also, you were reinforced. So if you hadn't reinforced, yeah. you would be unbelievably dead. I would now. be dead. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've got the the card to hand. Because I think it's attacking a croc in the picture, which I think it would do quite a good job of. Against a croc, a GR-75, or a Gazanti, those, like, smaller... Um, I um, have got the card to hand, and it... To me, it looks like a resistance transport. A resistance transport? Yeah, like the one from episode 8. Oh, the little thing? Yeah, oh, that would I make think a lot so. more sense. I, I could be wrong. I, I think that... When you look at the smaller of the epic ships, in in terms of sort of like putting them in a in a tier ranking, I would say the GR seventy five is at the bottom. It's very much a support ship. You put characters on there to help your other ships. The squid goes in the middle because it, in the right circumstances, it could do well. But I think the Gazanti is definitely of the the three smaller ones. It's definitely the best of them because it's just so much more. Oh, I forgot about the croc. I would say the croc is probably worse than the squid because it can't make up its mind whether it's an attack ship or a support ship, so it sucks. Yeah, like... I would say that. So, yeah, I'd say, Sorry, I, I, I'd say going from top to bottom, Gazanti, squid, croc, GR-75 is how I'd rank those for the smaller of the epic I, ships. I was say, you wouldn't fly a single GR-75 because... That would be a terrible idea. You you wouldn't fly a GR seventy five without bringing the Tantaviv. Oh, unless you had like a really strong squadron with it that was like it's their design to support them and provide them with all like the extra tokens and stuff. I mean, again, not familiar enough with all of the upgrades you can get, but I'm sure there is stuff in there so you could use it as a serious support ship so rather if than you're, if you're close, close enough. Amazing. If you're close enough, you can get shields back for free. There's coordinating teams where you can coordinate several people. Um, and there's a lot of, of, obviously, there's a lot of crew in the rebel side, like Leia, that already yeah. does stuff for everyone. The problem, I think, with that is a lot of those abilities require it to be close. Mm. And that but limits, quite... that limits. say, if you're bringing your, your squadron of excellence, that limits that to having to stay close to the epic ship. Yeah. I mean, the GR-75 is not that expensive, so I mean, you wouldn't necessarily say it's there to throw away, but it's definitely something that you could run a fairly good squadron with and have it as a support. But, I mean, in general, if you can take a tant for a radar, why not? They are insane. <laughs> they are very insane. I think the Gazanti is my favourite model, though, because it just looks so cool with the ties, just it, kind of... I would have to yeah. second that. The fact that they did that properly they didn't miss the trick there they allowed yeah. you to attach four ties for any any for anything you want really to the bottom of that it just that's looks... what makes that model and the model's great without that but being able to dock ties like that is amazing yeah, i was tempted to cool. bring that for this match and then i was like i could also just bring the raider and just destroy you so i decided on that instead <laughs> was this was writing this list very much a revenge story for your regular Sunday epic games. It was more of a, hey, look, what the, no wonder Connor always wins. Look what the Raider can do. It's, it's how it felt. It felt like revenge. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, it, it is very powerful. I mean, it, it's surprising to see it in a 300-point game because, again, it takes up a lot of that list, but, yeah, but it's for worth, good reason. For I good think it yeah. probably still win on its own. I mean, it'd be it'd be cool if they did like. Um, obviously, you've got the scenario cards for the Trident, where it, it could be essentially a what a non-player unit, 
it'd be cool if they did something like that with the Raider. It is. Or just the, the AI, I think they call it, games yeah. are interesting. Again, they're not perfect. They're, they're a, a little bit, you can see through the logic of them quite easily, so you can take advantage of the cards effectively. But it is good fun. But yes, I think having an independent epic ship that you could hunt would work. But for the raider, it'd be a bit harder because the squid's thing is it's like its tentacles just appear out of the dark and grab you. But with yeah, the raider, suppose. it's kind of a bit... You know, the, 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 um, the trident has the story to go with it. Yeah, it? Kraken. Oh my God, the whole story is the Kraken, like yeah, in, yeah. like in, like in Pirates of the Caribbean, where you don't see the Kraken, <laughs> and then you, and you stop. You're like, what's happening? And you get dragged down, and then you find your hat again. And that's the end of the movie. Sorry, I, I, Mo- that's a good moments point. of revelation there for Quinn. He suddenly clicked. The excitement in the voice was amazing there. <laughs> Today he learned. Rewatch Pirates of the Caribbean. At least the first three, they were good. I don't think I went past the first three, to be honest. But or that's uh, a five hours that, led to believe is also bad. That's a completely different tangent. Right now, we are here to talk a much better Disney franchise, what, which is Star Wars. What round are we on right now, Phil? I I'm we're surprised. On round three. I'm surprised that the uh, the squid's still there. To be honest, I thought when it got down to that four hole, that's it. But I suppose we haven't got to the attack yet. Yes, this is this is right. This will, judging from the numbers, this will be round two just before the engagement. Phase. Judging by your pointing as well, you're about to do some damage. I would like to yeah. hope that that is kind of the point of this list. Ah, oh, it's, it's just the, the reloads on on with ordnance team or whatever it's called, bombardment team. No, ordnance team are the reloaders. Bombardment team are the range changers. And it's just like, oh, you can reload, then you can spend a, energy which you have many of to reload more things and then you can spend another energy to get rid of the disarm tokens so you get f- basically free reload and then you have the upsilon to coordinate it into more actions and then you have muse around to take away the upsilon stress so that the upsilon can just stop and coordinate stop and coordinate and yeah it's just just a little bit broken I, ironically pattern. at this point as well i'm the one with tractor tokens on my huge ship um ion tokens are oh. Sorry, it's the wrong thing. Ignore that. Yes, it's one yeah. of the joys of one of the crits. So you need six ion tokens or six tractor tokens to affect a big ship, which is quite hard to get. But there are crits that you deal extra damage depending on how many ion tokens you have. So they can't, they're not ignorable, but they are mm. less dangerous, I guess. Yeah, it, it's crazy. Like the, obviously, the damage deck for Epic has two sections on it so you could get a crit and it could be fairly mild or if the attack is in i mean if the attack is coming from the right angle yeah, so it, yeah. Firing off, yeah. yeah it could be absolutely devastating so it could be a like your bridge section is damaged and does that i think that gives rid of your command cards or something your command character there's um, essentially or like, actions there's like uh crew panic which is uh, you can no longer do actions from your crew cards. There's mm-hmm. things that can stop you doing actions at all, stop you getting green tokens. There are ones that like stop you getting energy back. So Connor at this point has a crit that means he doesn't get back as many energy, which is bad for him because he needs them. Yeah. Um, or there's ones that stop you getting back energy at all, not just minus one, just completely dead. There's ones that you lose energy for as many ion tokens you have, get extra damage for as many ion tokens you have, get ion tokens. They're, I, they are much more brutal than your standard uh, um, damage they can, they can put your hard points offline as well, can't they? Yes. Yes, that's the big one. And then you have so, to spend energy and an action to get it back. Yeah. And, and considering how much hull, well, not my one, but considering how much hull the big huge ships have, you're bound to get a couple of crits. And yeah. they really screw up your plans. But I mean, <laughs> by, the, not by the time you get one. Yeah, by the time you're getting those crits, though, like you're probably getting towards end game, especially with something like the Raider and the Tantive. You're getting two shields back a turn. That's mental. So, like to to whittle that down does take a lot. Was it you, Quinn? I played a Tantive with two GR seventy five. Yes, it was. And where Tantive, you've just every got time you do an action, the GR seventy five gives you a shield back. 
So yes, it does. the Tantaviv could have got six shields back a turn. Yep, uh, so I never did that much damage because the Tantaviv can do uh, primary attacks up to range four, so I never got close. Ouch. I can also lock up to range four without spending energy. And then it has targeting battery and uh, turbo laser, which is like the scariest. And then things just die. Yeah, that was uh, that memorable. was nasty. Uh, yeah. So yeah. are we saying that the Tantiv is better out of the Raider and the Tantiv, or oh. the, the Raider can do more damage per turn? The Tantiv is more flexible. I prefer the Raider. I the Raider has two firing arcs, the tan, uh, but no, the Raider has has a full firing arc. But the Tantiv has two firing arcs. I think the Raider is better because you've, you're moving in the direction you're shooting. Whereas very, Tantive... very rarely do you get a, a shot with the Tantive out of one arc and out of the other arc. Yes. Yeah, because it's forward it's forward and back, isn't it? No, it's uh, left, left and right. right. Oh, left and right. Oh, so you, you, have to, you have to broadside everyone. That does make it really tricky unless you are able to somehow just fly straight down the middle and hope they're either side of you. But then again, good props to FFG for designing the two big ships, the two big, big ships in this way, which is forces you to fly them both very differently. So when they do come up against each other, there is this game of cat and mouse. Is the Raider going to try and get me into bull, in Bull's Ark? Is the Tantaviv going to show its side to me? I, I, I do just enjoy when they fly against each other. each other. Yeah. Just ram it, it is nice. Obviously, you're spending a lot of money for these ships, and if you are like some people, myself, you, you Connor, Wes, and you've you've purchased pretty much all of them, you don't want them all to be flying exactly the same. You want you want to feel like if you're flying the radar or you're flying the tandem, you're flying a specific ship. Yeah, yeah. I thought of another downside to the squid. Uh, in Epic, you have uh, a double initiative system. So you have yeah. uh, either eight north or seven one. So they move at seven, shoot at one, and eight zero. And the big ship, so the Tanti, Tanti, the, the the Corellian one, and the Raider um, are eight naught because they're like the biggest. So they shoot last and they move last. And the smaller ones are seven one. But the squid, despite being a smaller one, is still eight naught. So like here. I can shoot it first and get all of these crits in that make it harder for it to shoot and take away its energy and all that, when really it needs to shoot first so it can actually do something before it dies. Yeah. I mean, well, it all depends on road. So, in this turn, Connor did get to shoot it first, but I don't think it's really going to help him. Y yes, no. but if, if... I'd argue that if I was grappling onto a huge ship and using my dual beak, I feel like I'd get the damage in before the huge ship. Yeah. I I, I I do agree with Quinn here. I think it should have been a 7 1. It's just too squishy to be an 8 0 because if you look at it compared to the other two 8 noughts, and you're like, it's not really in the same league. It's more of a croc, but rather than being a crocodile, it's a squid. Yeah. Very animal themed for the scum and separatist side there, despite them being majority robots. Um, I mean, uh, I just can't go over it. it. It does look really cool. It's one of the coolest ships, like the coolest looking ships in the game, though. And I think all the epic ships are cool. I really like them. And it's a shame we don't get as see as much play with them. It's just um, a lot of effort. <laughs> so oh, yeah. Effort. Sorry, that's, uh, that's a dead squid there. Bye bye. And the thing about the squid is it's also got those two degrees of articulation. Don't forget the fact that two of the arms vaguely move. Yeah, there is that. But Never right now, squid. right now it's going to move itself off the board. I mean, so this we we saw this coming. Yeah. So when you looked at it, the radar hasn't taken all that much damage. It's into hull. But it's going to be getting some shields back in a moment. I also haven't finished because I'm now taking on the, the, the wing that's positioned itself nice and close. This is something that is interesting as well because you've got so many attacks with the radar. Um, it almost makes me feel that something that could even the playing field a little bit, and it's something that they do in um, 40k and other game systems as well, 
is before you shoot, you have to say what you're going to shoot at what. So you have to say, I'm going to shoot this at this, I'm going to shoot this at this, I'm going to shoot this at this. So for instance, with this, you've just piled into the squid. And if you just said, I'm going to pile everything into the squid to try and take it out, and you take it out before you've used all your shots, you then can't switch fire, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing to maybe potentially introduce, but I think it could make something like the Raider in a game like this slightly less powerful, especially when you've got so many attacks. Mm, that's yeah. an interesting concept. I, I quite like the idea of that because that's how that would work, wouldn't it? Yeah. You, you'd fire all your missiles at the squid, no matter which missile ends up killing it. All your other missiles are still on their way to the squid. Oh, so yeah. you were saying you're only allowed one target, whereas Phil was saying you could change, so you just say munition and target. Are you saying just all munitions have to go to the same target? Uh, no. 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 no I, I, I would say it's though, so you've got advanced protons, concussion missiles, you've got your main attack and you've got your targeted battery. So you would say, right, I'm going to shoot my advanced proton torpedo at the squid. I'm going to shoot my primary weapon at the squid as well. I will then use the targeted battery and the concussion missiles at the M3s. So that way, if you don't take the squid out with the APT and the primary, you then can't continue shooting at it. But if you had said, I'm going to shoot everything at the squid, and you take it out, and you've still got your concussions and your targeted battery, you can't then switch to a different target. Fair enough. I'm, it's I'm still it's just a concept. The, I still can't get over the fact that Squid's got an evade action with no no evade dice. Like, that's still, yeah. I still get turn away in the back of my head. Red evade action as well. Daddy dice. Um, and a red moon a... horse. It's really not that... It's really a very energy-hungry ship for a ship without that much energy. Yeah. I mean, it, it's... I mean, there's obviously things you can add to it to give it a boost of energy. Um, I mean, optimized power core, power core can help. Uh, Tibana gas reserves to give it a boost for three energy could possibly be helpful there. Those, those are like that's sacrificing an action or yeah. not being able to reverse. Like they're good on ships that can afford that. But I don't think that the squid's got that much spare that it can afford to lose. Like it's, yeah, it needs a whole support network if it's going to be strong. Which I just, I just don't think the game design really matches with the like ship's concept. It's a nice ship, I, but I just oh don't yeah. think it plays correctly. I think one thing that could possibly have helped is not parking it in front of the radar to start with. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, Boba, if, if, Boba it, Fett if was a waste of points there. Okay. If it's a great idea, I mean, if you'd have. If you were able to put it on one of the asteroids down towards the bottom near the Upsilon, then it could have been a completely different game. Yep, I would have forced uh, a little bit more movement from uh, yeah. Quinn's radar. But I put the Upsilon there to stop him doing exactly that, because you have to be ranged with it outside of range three of an enemy ship, so I made sure to arrange uh, the asteroids and ships appropriately. Yeah, it's, it's almost a shame that Tobias Beckett wasn't to hand then should always bring Tobias Beckett if you bring Boba Fett because it stops people like me ruining it. Oh yeah. I mean Tobias Beckett Boba combo is just it's always perfection. That like My it's a match made in heaven. Just being like I'm in ramming range now, so uh good luck. Yeah, it is pretty good. But again, that's one of the great things with these games. You can learn things from every game you play. And with Epic well, we don't play Epic. Well, you guys play Epic more than anyone I know at the moment, but we don't really play Epic that often. So it's hard to really get good with those ships because, as you said, like the games take ages to set up. There's, It's a longer game. I mean, we had a two-hour time limit for this game. Um, so it's a very long game. It's very intensive as well. I mean, adding the wing tools for your squadrons does help, though. So that is that is a really good thing. And the energy and shield management, I think, with the token device, it's a vast improvement from version one. Yep, I, I agree with almost everything you said there. The wing tool, especially when you're flying 
ties like I have done with the Vader and the Gazantin. You have so many ties. <sighs> you have to you haven't you can bring eight ties and still fit in a Vader, a Gazanti, and probably something else. That's 10, 11 dials having to set a turn that, and and having to move them all individually. I think the wing tool is great to make Epic more playable. Yeah. I mean, we, we've done it before where we did that three person, 300 points each, and we had wing tools in there that made it so much easier. I mean, I think I had two wings flying around. You had a very illegal wing, but it did look super cool. Um, and I had so no wings. No. Um, yeah, that didn't that didn't, didn't exactly go well. Well, it didn't go well for me. Like it looked like it was going badly for you, but then it just went horrible for me. That's just because Connor sniped all your points. <laughs> oh, and then I tried to do onto some rocks. That was fun. Oh, and then I bombed yeah. all of you. That was <laughs> 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 okay. Then your electro chaff bombed everyone, it's and I mean just... everyone. It's the same with Aces High. I always enjoy bringing a low initiative ship to oh right okay I'm going to let everyone do the damage and I'm going to come in right at the end take the points take the ship. bounty like, like an I3 into a, a flight academy that type of low initiative ship <sighs> that was good and that was uh, I think put people on the back foot a little bit when he did that actually um, and if you haven't get out of the set when you take away the red dice yeah. if you haven't watched flight academy yet guys um Go check it out. There's some cracking games on there. Uh, lots of different ships. 20 minute game limit. 1v1. It was just absolutely brilliant. And the season actually finished last week. And all the games are up. So you can see all of those now on the channel. And season two will be coming in about a month and a half, two months time. So looking forward to season two of that now. If you do watch it, don't forget to comment that the Hawk is the best ship on all of the videos, because it's true. <laughs> even, well, even the videos without the Hawk in it? Yeah, because <laughs> cause they'd be improved by the presence of a Hawk. You'd actually be surprised. We do have some comments on the other videos. Um, more about when I'm promoting it on Facebook and everything, but people are saying, oh, the Hawk was great. Like, the, the Hawk, Hawk is the great. best. And, and like superiority. It, you, it did remarkably well. Did much better than so, I expected it to. I brought it along as a silly ship, and then and then I was it wasn't quite so silly anymore. It, it well, counted we, so many people getting I mean, rid of that dice. On red dice, yeah. So taking away red dice. It's a shame that the ghost Kanan doesn't do the same. He is only for friendly ships, not himself. Yeah, but that would be crazy if the ghost could do that himself as well. So, ghost is a great ship. It is cool. It's cool and. Yeah, but we do have the final part of our trilogy of Aces High coming very soon as well. Um, by popular demand, we did actually do large base Aces High. On a standard it, mat, I might point out as well. <laughs> on, on a standard mat, and not only that, we actually had nine players, not eight. The pain you can hear in Phil's voice is real. <laughs> it, but it was just the most fun. So like, funny. Ace, Ace is High is always good. Like, definitely check it out. And that'll be coming up in a couple of weeks, guys. So keep an eye out for that. If you want to see some of the in game pictures for that, check out the Instagram. We put some pictures up as we were playing. And yeah, it was good fun. Again, quite a nice variety of ships in there doing different things. But yeah, good fun. Well worth playing. I mean, there were too many Star Fortresses for my liking. You uh, think one, one star fortress, one star is, too fortress many. is too many, yeah. <laughs> yeah, more than zero is too many star fortresses. Hey, Connor, you've got some points. Look, you've got almost a tenth of my points. No, you've got more than a tenth of my points. You, you've that, half pointed a, it, a, an upgradeless tie. Yeah, but look at the difference there. That's an insulting amount of points. I mean, yeah. I, that's I, all I've managed to do. Oh, you got it down to one hull, though. You might, you might actually kill it. And it's panicked. What is a little bit disappointing, though, is the fact that, and I, I, I mean this in the nicest way, Connor. It's a shame Quinn hadn't put like a four forward in for his radar when you parked pretty much all your <laughs> M3s right there. Because um, yeah, that would have just been pop, pop, pop. Oh yeah, yeah, that would have I mean, been four crits to all of them. Yeah, perfectly parked in my bullseye. And if I ran him over, I would also take crits. 
So, yeah, but I'm, you've got the hull to take it. But do I want to give him half points when I'm leading by 105 points? Does it matter? Yes, because it doesn't I mean, look as funny. <laughs> well, and also I want to get a chance to, to use my ship ability of everyone in my bullseye. I didn't expect him to park quite so perfectly in my bullseye like those three yeah. in front of the wing are basically central on the bullseye you could not try to be more bullseye if you tried it's, it's yeah. called good flying it's just called good flying really good flying <laughs> perfect flying i mean if you were up against an actual star destroyer it would probably be all right because they were terrible against small ships unfortunately the raider is kind of designed to go against these small ships Bit, uh, I know I mentioned earlier that the uh, sequel support of the epic ships is quite bad in terms of you've got this, the Gazanti, and just the GR-75 for the Resistance. Yeah, yes. yeah. You, you don't even get the Tantive even. That's the one that, that did was in the movie. Yeah, yeah. They, quite they prominently. both have like eight title cards, but none for the sequels which is a shame because the title cards are quite interesting and they can change what the ship can do. Like the GR-75 has quite a few intense title cards, but yeah. like none of them are for the sequels. So they bothered to make sequel-specific stuff for these ships so that you'd have a, a, a reason to fly them, but they didn't fully support them. It just seems like a bit of a shame. I feel that when they do bring out some more epic ships, that they will start looking at the other faction. You've now got the squid, which obviously, as we said, it's separatist and scum, but it's got separatist specific cards there. So I think that as they bring out more, we might see some for the other factions that haven't had that love. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm waiting for the Republic to get the consular class because oh, that yes. would be cool. I'm as surprised that squid came first. Like, is it in some recent bit of media? Is that is that why it's it came first because like well, the cast is more recognizable as a Star Wars ship. The squid just looks like a squid in the best possible way. It's quite heavily used in um, the Clone Wars TV show. It's also featured quite prominently in a lot of the Battlefront maps as well. Yeah, I mean, so that, that Camino map, it was uh, yeah. they were raining from the sky. Yeah, yeah that, funny. that whole map. Yeah. So, but I'm, I, I'm I, surprised they did squid first, for, even just for Seps. I'm surprised they did squid first. Yeah, looks cool. They they probably thought people would buy it for the looks, regardless of how it's you're played. probably right. Yeah, so they're like, hey, what would be funny? How about we make a squid? And everyone was like, yeah, and they made a squid. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I, I would like to see more epic ships. Um, I, I would like to see some faction-specific ones for a Sev Republic and the Consular class. That would be so cool, especially if we get a Qui-Gon Jinn card with it. Um, I would love to see some stuff for I mean, Resistance, Resistance and is, First Order, but... The Resistance's only option is the Tantive, which... Or the Transport get... from 8. The Transport? Oh, they don't, they don't need another Transport. <laughs> yeah. But it, it would basically be the GR-76. Um... But yeah, I mean, I, again, what, what, what is there? I mean, another option that could be there, could be there, like in the sort of GR seventy five size range, slightly smaller than the Gazanti. You've got the um, big ship from Rogue One that they stole. I mean, that's oh, going, that's going the, Empire. The turtle. Yeah, in the, the turtle with the four flaps that looks like an, two upsilons like yeah. stuck together. I'd like that. That would be cool. That would be cool. That would be a nice model. And you could they could do that Empire Rebels as well, because you could actually have Empire crew or Rogue One crew. And in fact the pilot, Bodhi, could be both. Right. You could it could be double dual sided. You could have the Imperial Bodhi and then the Rebel Bodhi. It'd probably just be a one sided command card with Empire or a uh, list involving Jyn Erso or something like they're doing with their Mandalorians where you can get some which are faction exclusive unless you have somebody. Oh, or like Maul. Like Maul is yeah. exclusive unless you have Ezra. Or Triple Zero. Oh yeah, Triple Zero and BT1 with Darth Vader or Scum. Yeah, there's, there's a few there which could be quite interesting. I mean, again, I just 
Oh, I like that picture. Yeah, more crits. Yeah. Uh, so we did decide to remove the crits from the side so that the ships could stay on the screen. Uh, but there were a lot of crits there. So we've still got Leighton's crits because Leighton is still on the board, but Genesis... Genesis is dead, baby. Genesis Red's dead, baby. There you go. Gotta, gotta love a Pulp Fiction reference. Um, but yeah, it's uh, Connor. It looks like it's going well, to be honest. Oh yeah, yeah. I couldn't have uh, couldn't have hoped for more in this I mean, game. tyranny has got a nice bullseye on on my radar, so I get some free damage. Right. Hard not to get that bullseye, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's I mean, you're that also base is huge. one of the Upsilon, so that's not ideal. Yeah. No. I mean, I love the I love at, at this point, I'd be like, I'm not even going to bother with radar. I'm just going to try and do as much damage to Tabson as I can. So it, I think it'd be at least that damage would stick compared to against the radar where it just goes, oh, look, I'm going to get those shields back. Getting shields back is so strong. It's like, oh, what's that? You've got rid of my shields. I've got the back. It's fine. It kind it makes sense though. It does kind of make sense, and obviously when the crits come in to to remove that, it, it does feel right. So, yeah, I mean they've got bigger shield generators, haven't they? If you think yeah, you, you've got the teams on there to actually help fix that as well. So, like in the original Battlefront Two, where you could repair all the damage rather than fighting, you could just run around your capital ship repairing stuff. That was good. Or you could fly onto the opponent's capital ship, board it, and and destroy it from the inside. That was, yeah, that, that, that that was, was my cool. tactic. That was the tactic. Oh yeah, you know, don't bother with space fights with the glitchy PS2 controllers. Don't do that because you just crash into stuff. Just go inside and blow everything up with uh, proxy mines, and and then it's fine. And then you put you know an LAAT in the separatist ship, and then you can spawn clone troopers inside the separatist ship, and all the all of the ships get confused because why are there people inside? Oh, that's so good. What a game. What a game. I've, I've just thought of something really cool that could be like a good sort of like linking game. Is you could you could run an epic game like this and you have like a special boarding action. And if you're able to board with like a shuttle or something, you then switch over to another map and you play like some Imperial Assault as though you're like, at, like Imperial Assault or Legion where you're actually running through the ship trying to destroy it. And it will have in-game effects on the main game. Like if you manage to get to the engines and disable it, the the, the epic ship can't move as quickly. I think that that'd be cool. To this like, to work. A, like a star destroyer assault, where you've got to first land on the star destroyer and then fight your way through the star destroyer. Like, yeah, that would be maybe more of a video game type premise, but it would be also awesome to play on board, like tabletop or video game. But yeah. That's all yeah. three, that three level, no, two levels of of combat. I mean, you could go mentally go three levels and start it at Armada, and when the little squadrons get into range of each other, then you do the X Wing game to determine how that actually ends up. You, I mean, you could take this that, one step further. Stay for Star Destroyer into this, then. Ooh. You could you could take one further step back and play Star Wars Rebellion, where you're looking at the galaxy map. We've just inve- reinvented Imper- um, Galactic Conquest from Battlefront 2. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah. Where you start on the universe map and then you meet capital ship, capital ship over a planet and then you fight <sighs> capital ships and then you fight uh, atmospheric um, starships and then you fight on the ground. Well, that, oh. that was that was Galaxy of War for the PC, wasn't it? Essentially, you could do that. And I'm not going to lie, I never did the ground missions. I only did the space missions because... <laughs> like who who doesn't want to do I, an RTS I was in, the same, in space? I was in the same boat as you. I'd also always auto resolve the ground missions. Always, yeah. I, I didn't fun. want to waste an hour with a ground campaign when I've got spaceships flying around my screen, and I'd much prefer to play with those. Yeah, I, I you love the inverse the on RTS two because Battlefront two was designed as a fir- as a third person shooter that happened to have spaceships in it, so the spaceships yeah. weren't quite as good. Going back to your boarding action idea, Phil, I'd love to see the tie. Is it what's what's the tie? Is it the tie boarding shuttle that looks like a bomber? Yes, and they've replaced the even, bombs even, on the right hand side of yeah, boarding. Even if that was a config or something, I'd love for a, using a boarding tie shuttle 
whatever it's called, to go up into a ship. And if the ship's bigger than you, then you have a crew and you have some some sort of boarding team and they can go do damage. They can do stuff. They can stop you from taking certain actions or... So so you know how we have secret condition cards now for Zan? You could have it where you had two secret condition cards. One was you could change the manoeuvre to one of the same speed or you could change the difficulty of the manoeuvre to red or you could do damage and you choose one of them and then you... La- you if you board it like that if you get to range one in a certain arc or range zero or something then you assign it that condition and then the All next that. turn that condition is resolved a bit like a delay like a almost like a mine oh we've got cool. commando teams now you could definitely do it with commando teams where you drop a commando team and then if a ship runs it over they board it and then you yeah. I, I like the idea of secret band this secret sabotage things where if you've sabotaged my ship i don't know what you've done and i have to do the right thing not to trigger whatever you've because like, i like, it was like that a i really like that because you didn't know what it was and you set like say a one straight when you're on the edge of the board and you could actually turn it to a left or right maneuver then that ship's off the board and you you get those points like hey amg if you're listening hit us up we're full of crazy ideas that yeah. could be yeah. good or could we'll, be awful we'll like, take the royalties on that as well I don't. I think I just, yeah. to be honest, I just take a free pack of the cards or an early pack of the cards. Yeah, because, butter that. <laughs> because, like, new waves are just that exciting. Like, I, I do it for free if you are willing to like pay me in cards or yeah. model or both. I mean, guys, those of you that are watching this, if you like any of these suggestions or you think or the other crazy suggestions that you would potentially like to see in a standard game or an epic game. Drop them in the comments below. We'd love to hear the crazy stuff. You never know. We might be mad enough just to try and actually get it to work. So just let us know what you think about those options or if you could design something, what it would be and how it would work. Uh, custom cards. Like There, there are oh, some crazy ones on there. That's I mean, a rabbit Connor, hole. Connor and I used to, used to make them because we were like, why are these cards missing from the game? And... Yes, also, was it you found an Azure Angel one that's got the five boosts? Uh, yes, I found an Azure Angel that granted you the five boost, to use the five template when you boosted. That would be hilarious. Oh, but what's that? Man. I've got a four forward and a five boost. It's a super slam. Yeah, without the because disarm. Then, yeah, without the disarm, is it? Oh, yeah. And I'll spend a force to barrel roll. Yeah. Um, <laughs> This is mental. Like custom cars are, are scary. What some people do, cool. Some of them, but scary. But um, which is why oh, AMG Connor. should reach out to us so that they can like quality control our ideas before they print them. Is that, is Connor, that, you've is got that half, half points. points on a radar. Yeah, yes, half please. Points on a radar. Ooh, nice. Ooh. That's... Wouldn't it be a shame if someone were to regain <laughs> shields? Yeah, I well, know. I know. I know. Right now, yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy to lose when I've got over a hundred points here. The, the difference is uh, is acceptable as it stands. I know what's coming. I love yeah. the way that for most of my game, my ships just haven't moved. The tide has kind of flitted through the middle, and the right, the other two just sort of sat there, just like we're, we're exactly where we need to be. I mean, was we, it Muse that was taking the service. stress off you? Yeah, Muse just let yeah. my uh, Upsilon just sit there because it was just like, start of the engagement phase, lose a stress. Oh, I guess I'll just take a stress off the Upsilon. And now when it gets damaged, you can do a free action. Oh, that's a shame. I can do two free actions. Oh, no. Focus, coordinate, target lock, jam. What could be next? I mean, the zero stop is one of your favourite most used moves. I see you use it all the time to the point where when people are playing against you, they are... They're almost anticipating it, and when you don't do it, it surprises them. I mean, the best move on the Hawk style is a stop, because it's a small ship, and every time I do it, people go, I don't remember the Hawk could do that, and they'll be like, oh dear, what a shame. It's not yeah. a ship you imagine that can do it, though. The Ozotuck can also do it as a small ship that stops, but the Ozotuck is oh, funny. See, I forget that as well. It, <laughs> when a small ship stops, it really surprises me, because I always forget. I mean, the stop definitely feels like a large ship thing, like the Upsilon, the silent, uh, the lambda, the YV six 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 has the yep. stop. Yeah, they're the ships you imagine having a stop because they're going slow enough as it is. But when you see yeah, a small base ship stopping, you're like, oh, 
the it's Ewing like, shot stopping everyone remembers because it can also swivel. Like, uh, the, yeah. the, like the gauntlet can also swivel. So that's going to be fun. It's slightly different, though, the way that one does it. It's like the reverse of the Ewing, if I read it rightly. I think is, it's just that you flip the card at a different time. I think is, it's yeah. much the same. Is it similar to the um, HMP's repulsor where you flip the yes. card the turn before you do it? No. So it's, it's, is it not like that where you, where you kind of you give stop. away that Once you're you going to do it? Once you stop, you have to flip the card. Right. So it's not like the Ewing where you get the choice. Once you stop, you flip the card and then you roll one less. And then to flip it back, you have to do a non-stop maneuver. So it's kind, it's right. kind of similar, I guess, to the um, landing on asteroids with the... Uh, um, the vultures and the hyenas. Yeah, you have, you have to do a certain maneuver to undo the negatives of what you've got. But it is... It's going to be interesting because it's just a big ship, and just turning a big ship ninety or one hundred eighty degrees is just going to be unfair. I mean, it's a big, big ship. Just pivoting those wings is going to be cool. I think when I open it, I'm going to spend probably about twenty minutes just going pivot, 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 pivot. Pivot. It's going to be. <laughs> oh god! I'm... No, <laughs> I, I I caused that, and I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, it it's going to be so cool, and I can't wait to get hold of that. And there's a race now, as well that we were all very excited for, but now mm. that the gauntlet's turned up, we all keep forgetting. I mean, I'm I'm crazy excited for both. There's some wicked cards in there. The new cards that have just been leaked for Pride of Mandalore. There's just oh, I mean, there are I'm, so many. I'm just excited about how many cards there are. In that pack, so we're still <laughs> missing some. Oh, I'm looking forward to uh, rearranging all of my folders to be able to fit them in. Blaze Bomb just looks funny. They're just dropping space napalm. It's great. Yeah. It's such a Mandalorian thing to do. It's like we've invented space napalm. It is <laughs> absolutely mental. Um, but it looks like at the moment we have Sunny Bounder versus the world. Uh, uh, he, and, he was right, the best I... pilot on the board. And the half I've lost my 100 points. Yeah. <laughs> Sunny Bounder is definitely my favourite M3 pilot. I've never got him to work when it's been useful, but. His ability is just so much fun. So it's like, how can you not enjoy his ability? But he's he's cheap as well, isn't he? Because he's an I one, I guess. Because he's yeah. an I one, and because his ability very re- is not is not you can't oh, rely what, on his ability to win you a game. What an ignominious end for Sonny! And just yeah. literally running him over. There we go. Him. Yeah. If you've done a five k, you'd probably be all right. <laughs> I mean, at least we got to see one ramming action there. It feels right that that happened and I mean I know the points say 292 again it's because we couldn't get all the cards on the Trident for some reason but that that's a very comprehensive victory there 313 to me in his death in death yeah. at one of my shields so good job didn't, again. still didn't quite get you back under half what a shame but I'm that was great to watch. I know we've rambled over most of it, but it, it's really cool to see the epic ships on the board. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to get some more epic action on the channel as well because it's just it's too much fun not. Um, and we've got enough people that've got some got epic, so maybe we can sort something out like that soon. But guys, thank you very much for firstly actually playing epic for us on the channel and coming along and commentating with us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Phil. Sorry. And guys, what we're going to do, we're going to leave it there. Um, but if you have liked what we're doing, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you want, we have the link for the Patreon in the description below so you can support us on Patreon as well. But we will see you next time.